Hi, Dunstan. I see you starting your day, right? How are you? I'm good, you know. I'm here. I'm alive in this very, very interesting time in life. And I'm happy to be here leading and navigating through what is one of the most challenging times in the history of this country. What are your morning rituals? My morning rituals are like everyone else, you know. I, I get up, I give thanks, I engage with my family, and I ensure that I link with that philosophy that says, Thy will be done. What song is a must on your morning playlist? I'm Roman Catholic, and one of my favorite hymns is a hymn that repeats Jeremiah that says, We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another and walk humbly with God. I'll catch you later. All right. In one sentence, tell us what you do. I am the accounting officer for the Ministry of Health and Wellness. What was the most difficult decision for you this week? Boy, the most difficult decision for me this week was the decision that I had to make to reduce staff complement because after COVID, some persons who were employed for the COVID engagement, we had to um, terminate their contracts. And it was sad to see a lot of them go because they were so important to the overall implementation of the COVID campaign. Do you feel that you inspired or motivated anyone last week? Um, yes, I believe I have inspired my team. Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning, morning. And I believe that um, the other colleagues that I engage with in terms of the regional directors, the regional technical directors, we had very robust meetings over the last couple of days around the budget, and we are inspired to work. Has anyone or anything made you feel inspired lately? Um, yes. I am inspired by the team of persons that I work with here. My special assistant who gives me all the support that I need. My policy analysts that are assigned to my office, they are such an important part of the work that we do here in the executive office. What's your proudest career moment today? Um, my proudest career moment is working at the uh, PATH program where every decision that I made during my tenure there impacted the lives of so many people. If it were just improving the payment access or increasing the number of persons that got the benefit, or it could be the opportunities that we gave um, to young people to change their lives through um, active labor market interventions. Those were very very, very proud moments in my life as we impacted and transformed so many lives, especially when we talk about the persons who come from past households and receive so many um, accolades in terms of their academic achievement. What would you like your legacy to be in the public sector? My legacy will be a change agent. And I want to be a person who sets the foundation for the reform that is so well needed in the public sector. I know that I myself will not be able to achieve all of the changes, but to set the foundation so that the baton can be passed to the next set of leaders coming into the public sector, and they can take it and transform this bureaucracy into a system that provides a lot of support for the people of this country. Where's the most interesting place your work has taken you? Um, Ethiopia. I, I, I remember working with the Jamaica Social Investment Fund and under that project we went to Ethiopia to experience what community intervention and enablement looks like. And that was a very powerful experience to see that country move through most of, some of the most challenging times of its of its history and come on the other side of history looking far more robust and far more sustained and resilient. What are you working on that you are excited about? There's a lot of things that I'm working on that I'm very excited about. One of the major things that I'm excited about right, right now is the intervention 
to improve and expand our cancer treatment program in Jamaica by ensuring that in terms of radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and other services relating to cancer, we can provide support to people who get this devastating diagnosis and we can provide the help for a very catastrophic financial hit that families get and enable them to live fruitful and beneficial lives even after coming out of this traumatic experience. And before, before we go, can you recommend one book you think everyone should read? Ah. My book of transformation is The Children of Sisyphus by Orlando Patterson. It's a, it's a tale of a woman who lived in Dongle, which was, where, which was what Tivoli was called. And she came out of the Dongle, became a little bit empowered, but then her poverty brought her back straight to the Dongle. So it's an, it's an experience of what poverty is and how poverty captures your mental um, capacities and can disable you if you are not careful and if you do not understand that poverty is a sickness of the mind. Right, thank you so much, Nelson. Sure, later. Have a good one. Yeah, man.